Hi there, it's Tammy here. And in this video, we're going to talk about something that I've termed the Google tab phenomenon. How it adds to the feeling of overwhelm and information overload during pregnancy and how you can actually avoid it. And let me just start by asking you a question. How many tabs do you have open in Google right now? And I'm pretty sure that if you ask any woman pregnant with her first child, I have no doubt that their answer is going to be somewhere around the a lot mark, right? And no doubt at least one of them is going to be a generic free trimester based pregnancy workout. <laughs> Now, of course, this doesn't mean that those onto their second, third, or even fourth pregnancy are going to be exempt from the Google tab phenomenon, because the reality is every pregnancy is different, and the symptoms and, ex and experience of one isn't necessarily going to be your experience for the second and subsequent pregnancies. And there are, of course, women who want to ensure that their second or subsequent pregnancies are better than their first. And I think what I'm trying to get at here is no matter what pregnancy you're on, it's likely that you're experiencing the Google tab phenomenon. Now, Google, of course, can be both helpful and a hindrance. Having information at our fingertips is amazing, but we also have to recognize that there is a darker side to having access to an endless amount of information. Social media, I believe, also sits in this realm. And part of that darker side is adding to the overwhelm, overload, and anxiety that the pregnant population already feel. And this isn't even talking about the vast amount of misinformation that there is out there from sources that, you know, use a lot of smoke and mirrors to make you believe that they're trustworthy when really they're not. And there's no arguing the pregnant population are more anxious and suffering from anxiety and depression at a much higher rate than they were 25 years ago. In fact, the research suggests that prenatal depression is on average 51% more common among young mothers than during their mother's generation 25 years ago. Or framed in a slightly different way, mothers are 51% more likely to suffer from depression now than they were 25 years ago. That is an insane increase when you think about it, 50% more. And I have no doubt in my mind that social media and access to unlimited information at our fingertips is contributing to this. And when it comes to social media and the portrayal of perfect lives and perfect bumps, this can actually be seriously detrimental to a woman's mental health when their experience isn't matching what they're seeing on social media. Remember, it's a highlight reel, right? And on the flip side of this, you have the anxiety of trying to live up to the perfect image of what a modern, modern mother should actually look like these days. And this vulnerable population is already overwhelmed, trying to navigate the vast changes that they're going through in every single aspect of their life. And I'm not denying accessing information can help this feeling of overwhelm, <clears throat> but the darker side is that can also contribute to it as well. As you find yourself getting deeper and deeper into the weeds of Google searches, and this of course can provoke feelings of fear, anxiety, worry, and overwhelm. It's like I don't know about you, but it's like when you have a random pain and next minute after Googling your symptoms, you're kind of self-diagnosing yourself with a different deadly disease. I don't know, is that just me? <laughs> now, in the pregnant population, imagine this, but on steroids, right? Because it's a new symptom every day. And one area I can tell you with confidence, the pregnant population need to make decisions about, want to know more about the options that are available to them and have varying kind of levels of fear around is the birth. And when you have unlimited access to information, and even if there's only a hint of fear around the birth, guess where your internet searches are going to lead you? 
down the rabbit hole of birth stories, which can only add fuel to the fire. Even if there's just the smallest amount of fear around your birth path, and for those who are already feeling a little bit anxious around their birth, this can actually really add to the feeling of overwhelm. But it's not just birth stories or the birth that the pregnant population or you're likely Googling or searching for, right? Is it safe to exercise during pregnancy? And what exercises are safe during pregnancy? Both of these are super high on the search list during pregnancy. Because like birth, when it comes to exercise during pregnancy, there is actually a lot of fear around what's safe for you and your baby. And of course, this is totally understandable because the large majority of women are not educated or experienced in this area, regardless of their training age or experience. And from my experience, even other extremely experienced strength coaches still find themselves in the same position. So how are the general population meant to navigate this minefield? And it's not just exercise and the birth that women are searching for. The search topics relating to pregnancy are literally endless. You hear things like nutritional guidelines. Is it safe to eat and insert many things here? <laughs> what vitamins are good for pregnancy? What symptoms should, buy, should I be experiencing at X amount of weeks? I have no pregnancy symptoms. Tell me about pregnancy weight gain. Pregnancy week to week, things to do, things to buy. Can pregnancy cause, and you can insert any number of things in that one. Why is pregnancy so lonely? Is it normal to, and again, insert any number of things in that one. I mean, I could actually go on here forever because this stage of life is so transformative and affects every aspect of a woman's life from their physical body and her health, to her relationships, your professional life, your body image, and your relationships with yourself, your values, and your priorities. Even the things that you typically do for fun or help manage stress have likely changed, right? Every week, there's something new happening. In fact, day to day, there's likely something new happening in one aspect of your kind of wheel of life. And Google is typically the place that pregnant women go to get their information from. And this, of course, is through no fault of your own, because while there seems to be an overwhelming amount of medical appointments that you need to attend during your pregnancy journey, and of course, multiple connection points with your healthcare provider, what I actually believe is that there is a distinct disconnect with the information that's being provided across the core pillars of health and what actually needs to be learned. And of course, the medical professionals can't be blamed for this either. I'm not blaming them at all because the reality is you only see your healthcare provider for a limited amount of time at your scheduled visits. And within these visits, there's such a vast amount of information that's specific to you and your baby's immediate health and well-being that your healthcare provider needs to prioritize the information that they're delivering in that time. And studies have even shown that a lack of time or time constraints are the biggest barrier preventing healthcare professionals from providing lifestyle counseling with their pregnant patients. And let's be real here. These topics are vast. They can change or they do change with the different stages of pregnancy and they take time to navigate and explain in detail. Trust me, I know because I've built an entire program around this. But the thing is, this is time that we already know that the healthcare providers don't have. So it's quite possible that the vast amount of information that needs to be covered when discussing various lifestyle factors during pregnancy actually just add to this lack of time feeling that your healthcare provider is already experiencing. 
So this leaves the pregnant population to kind of fill this gap on their own with things like Google or social media. And this is what leads to what I call the Google tab phenomenon. And like I've said, it isn't all bad. There's some fantastic content out there from incredibly experienced professionals. But like everything in life, there's always a flip side to this. And for those who are already feeling anxious and fearful, it has the capacity to lead you down a very deep and somewhat depressing rabbit hole of things like risk factors, symptoms, complications, statistics, percentages, and long-term side effects. God, that's just to name a few, right? And of course, there's always a story. I mean, I've worked in this area for over a decade now, and I think I've either worked with or heard stories of clients' friends or friends of clients that relate to pretty much every pregnancy complication that's included in the Pregnancy Process Program. And I tell you, there's a lot of information in there. But the thing is, it's not about not Googling. It's not about not reading other women's birth or pregnancy stories. It's more about the headspace that you're coming to this information gathering expedition with, right? So not only are you feeling like you're lacking information, and on a side note, lack of information is one of the biggest barriers to entry when it comes to exercise during pregnancy, which is why so many women turn to these free online generic trimester-based workouts without knowing that there is actually a better way. So not only are you feeling like you lack information, but you're also probably feeling uncertain about what the future holds because the reality is pregnancy as a journey is a lot, there's a lot of unknown, you know, especially if you're a first time mother. But it is extremely well known that it's only a small hop, skip and a jump away from uncertainty in the known and known to feelings of worry and anxiety. So I'm not sure if you can see where I'm going with this, but one of the natural kind of ways humans use to reduce feelings of uncertainty is information gathering. Or when you lack information around something, you go in search of it. And when you're coming at this search from a place of worry, anxiety or uncertainty, our brains have this crazy capacity to naturally want to go on a search to confirm our worries and our anxieties, right? And that's exactly what our brains are going to try and do. And the reality is, as humans, we're actually practically hardwired towards the negative. You know, research has even shown that we literally make decisions based on negative information more than positive data. And when you put all of these things together, you know, the lacking information, the feeling anxious, worried and uncertain, our brain's desire to confirm these worries and the fact that we're practically hardwired towards the negative, you can kind of start to see why you might want to avoid the Google tab phenomenon. So I think the big question is, when your healthcare providers lack time to provide you with the in-depth knowledge across the core pillars of health, you feel like you're experiencing vast changes on a day-to-day -day and a week-to-week -week basis, but you're lacking the necessary information to help you navigate all of these changes that you're experiencing. You know, you're really unsure what's safe for you, what's unsafe for your baby, especially when it comes to exercise. And I mean, sure, your friends and family are well-meaning, but let's be real here. They're not actually really coming from a place of knowledge, expertise, or experience. So, Besides turning to Google, what else can you do? Google, who do I call if I have questions about my pregnancy? Or where can I ask pregnancy questions? <laughs> I mean, that in itself is just a funny thought, right? Now, and no doubt, I'm pretty sure if you actually do this, you'll be redirected to a national hotline that could probably very well answer your questions, right? Which is great. 
but I believe to avoid the overwhelm and the information overload that can come with the Google tab phenomenon in the pregnant population. What you actually need is ongoing education, guidance and support across the four core pillars of health from a trusted source a source that's with you throughout your pregnancy journey. Someone who has proven knowledge, expertise, and experience in this area. And on a side note, being able to speak to those that are either currently working with or have worked with as a reference point is really important as well. And it's about making sure that you have contact with someone who can answer your questions, you know, and help you make sense of what you're reading and put it into perspective in relation to your journey. Someone who can help keep you out of those negative thought spirals and pull you out of the rabbit holes when you find yourself down one. And trust me, we all go down them. And I believe ongoing connection to a specialist, access to a quality in-depth pregnancy specific program across the core pillars of health and a community of like-minded women going through a similar journey who you can share your experiences with is actually how you avoid the overwhelm and overload that can come with pregnancy and with the Google tab phenomenon. And when it comes to knowing what's safe in relation to training during pregnancy and training in a way that's going to build solid foundations for the weeks, months and years ahead, you know, as you journey into a motherhood, I certainly believe a better option than the free generic pregnancy workouts that you find online is actually working with a specialist who can provide bespoke principle-based program design with individualized exercise prescription that's correctly timed, sequenced, and adjusts over time as your pregnancy progresses. In my eyes, this is a much safer and much, much more effective way to approach your training during pregnancy. You know, pregnancy can be a lonely journey filled with anxiety, worry and uncertainty, which leads to the overwhelm and overload that can come with the Google tab phenomenon. But it doesn't have to if you choose the right support system to have around you. And if you would like the opportunity to join a community where you have ongoing access to a specialist, head to the link in my bio or the video description below and apply to join my complimentary but private community. So that's it from me today. I really hope this video helped and I'll see you in the next one.